how's everybody doing? Well, I couldn't have picked a better occasion on which to attempt to return to vlogging as this one. Uh, yes, because uh, this commemorates the wonderful and unsightly bug bite on the end of my nose. So, you know, it's just not fair. I mean, if Brad Pitt or Johnny Depp get a bug bite on the end of their nose, what do they get? They can get a new nose. Me? I just got to go on. I've just got to be a trooper. So, yeah, I've I've missed doing this and and uh so here I am. I've I've finally returned and um I wanted to talk a little bit about something that happened at the end of August. The last day of August, August 31st, something happened that I've been waiting for for I don't know how long. An eternity it would seem. You know, and of course it's it's relating to uh you know, home video and DVDs, you know, my <laughs> my passion, my life. And uh it is uh technically within the realm of uh the horror genre. But August thirty first, Image Entertainment in cooperation with Universal Studios, finally on the fiftieth anniversary year of this particular TV series, released it in a sort of sizable two-season edition. The TV series was entitled Thriller, or better known to a uh, generation to which I belong as Boris Karloff's Thriller. Boris Karloff was the host, and he did the introductions for all the shows, uh, in addition to starring in five of them, I believe. Uh, one in the first season, and four in the second season. Um, it, um, it was a little tiny bit before my time. It ran from 1960 to 1962, which would have put me in the range of being from five to seven years old. Um, now, between six and seven was definitely the time where I was starting to discover the universal horror classics. And uh, there's a little t story maybe I'll try to tack on the end of this that might amuse some of you. But yes, Boris Karloff would come on every week and uh, do a little bit of an introduction to sort of ease us all in to the story that was about to be told. Now, my friends, you know all about the magic that the sorcerers of the silver screen put on film for your entertainment. Well, tonight, as sure as my name is Boris Karloff, you will learn that sorcery can be performed without celluloid. Behind the cameras, Perhaps even in your own living room. I love this show. I would venture to say that it is, you know, with one or two possible exceptions, my favorite of all TV series that, that I've liked and watched regularly. Um, and so that's what makes this such a, an amazing occasion for me, uh, to finally see this series um, released in its entirety on home video, all 67 episodes. The series actually started out much to the network's chagrin, um, as sort of a crime drama series. Uh, and that struck the network, being NBC, as, as being a bit strange because, well, geez, the show's called Thriller, and it's hosted by Boris Karloff. We were expecting Frankenstein. Where's Dracula? 
We're holding our breath for the Wolfman. This thing's being made in, in, in cooperation with Universal Studios. So, you know, those were their classic monsters in their stable. And uh, so, yes, the network uh, had kicked up a bit of a fuss and got some new producers. And they redirected the focus of the show to include and to, to a certain degree favor the horror genre. And they uh, took many of the scripts that were developed for the show. Uh, the stories were originally tales that appeared in the old Weird Tales publication. And, uh, well, there's an interesting uh, story that goes along with that. Um, one of the people associated with the new producers uh, went in search of stories to be able to fulfill the network's uh, command that they do some horror stories. And uh, he must have, I don't know, uh, heard that somebody, uh, you know, they were selling crates and crates of these old weird tales magazines. So he phoned the guy up and the guy says, I'm sorry, you're too late, I already sold them to Forey Ackerman. But call Forey and ask him if you can buy them from him and give him a little profit and he'll probably go for that. Well, the guy called Forey Ackerman and he said, eh -eh, I ain't parting with these because it was a complete set. So, uh, you know, and uh, Forey had gotten a deal on them. So the guy was very wily. He, he, he actually proposed to Forey. He said, listen, what if you let me buy them from you now? And when the series ends, I'll sell, sell them back to you and give you a profit. And Forey liked that. So he went ahead and did it. Sold the stories to this fellow. And he spent most all of his time reading through these old magazines, trying to find the stories that would best suit the series. He would pick five of them, hand them in, uh, and the producers would pick from that five two that they would develop with the writers and so on and so forth. And some really classic television was brought into being, definitely. So I found this series during its original syndication run, which was, you know, a year or so after its network run. And it was really advantageous for, you know, people in my age group uh, because they ran it five days a week at, you know, something like, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon. And, um, you know, that was definitely a great deal more convenient for, you know, little kids who uh, found it or would have found it very difficult to try to stay up until, you know, 10 o'clock, you know, when it, when it had its uh, network run. Anyway, so here it is. It's on in the afternoons, and here's Uncle Boris, and he's telling you this little story about, oh my gosh, you know, wait till you see this, because as sure as my name is, you know what. <laughs> yeah, so, um... I still can't believe I was this stupid when I was a kid. But I saw this guy, okay? Here's Boris Karloff, and he's a big star. But to me, he was born old, you know? To me, he was born a 70-something-year-old man. Uh, and, and, and there he was on my TV screen five days a week presenting these thrillers. And my mother happened to, you know, come over to me one day while I was watching this, uh, this show, and she uh, happened to volunteer the information that uh, he is the man, Boris Karloff, he's the man who portrayed the Frankenstein's monster. That's Frankenstein! And I looked at her, and I, I just looked at her, and I, I said, you, I know you've got to be kidding. No way is that guy Frankenstein. No way. I just, just, I couldn't conceive of it. Well, 
This was 30 years earlier that he had done so. Uh, and I had just discovered uh, the original film, uh, you know, on some of the local creature feature uh, showcases. And uh, no way did he look like Frankenstein. <laughs> no way. Um, but, you know, and we went round and round about this for, for some time, but she finally convinced me. I am not sure. I don't quite remember how she did it, but she, she finally did get me to believe that, oh, okay, that's him. It's just later in his life, you know? So, uh, I just, I can't get over that. Uh, and to think, uh, too, that, um, it's very much the case that uh, all during my childhood, it can honestly be said that Boris Karloff was my favorite movie actor. You know, he was my favorite horror icon, and he still is. Uh, I have a lot of fondness for, you know, thinking back to those years when I first saw so many of those films. And um, I've had a lot of good times in recent years collecting those films that were favorites when I was a kid, but also discovering other films that I had not seen, uh, which featured or starred Boris Karloff. And um, that has been some major fun for me. I've really enjoyed that. And, you know, I know that there are a lot of Karloff scholars out there who like to um, argue and debate about, you know, which movie he was more invested in you know, versus another, and, oh, this one he's just kind of sleepwalking through because it's kind of silly, and, uh, oh, this one is, oh, much more serious intent involved, and, uh, this is Karloff, uh, firing on all burners, and all, you know, I love them all. Certainly, there are those films that are more quality productions than others, but, I love them all because you know what? We're never ever going to get a new Boris Karloff movie. And with the exception, I think, of, you know, one or two that he did way toward the end of his life where he just wanted to try to keep working, and they were horrible. The snake people. <laughs> uh, no, I prefer to think of his last film as being Targets or The Crimson Cult, even though that was a bit silly too, but I mean, it's his last pairing with uh, Christopher Lee. Uh, and it also featured uh, uh, Barbara Steele. So, I mean, it can't be completely dismissed. Uh, but yeah. So, in a very real way, Thriller was the, um, the kickoff point for me. As, as a horror fan and as a, a uh, classic Universal Studios horror fan. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've been renting Thriller from Netflix and, um, you know, two discs at a time. And uh, there are 16 discs in all, so it's going to be a little while till I work my way through. But I've really been enjoying uh, seeing the episodes again. Um, many years ago, Sci-Fi Channel had uh, shown them very, very late at night, and I rediscovered them then, oh, about 15 years ago. And um, they hold up. And I would stay up until all hours to watch them, and it was really a pleasure. And I grabbed some of them on tape to, uh, you know, sort of tide me over over the years. But here it is. Here it is, the full-fledged uh, official edition. And for those of you who are inter interested, it's out there. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I guess I've blithered on here long enough, and uh, I'll, I'll leave you all to your thoughts and talk to you later.